Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. Do you want to hear a story? I'm not letting go. Are you ready for this? Follow your heart. I'm going in. This. This is. This is. Blockbuster Smash Up. Welcome to another episode of Blockbuster Smash Up. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and as each episode, I'll be joined by my co host, Todd G. Levin, and our special guests as we try to smash one globally accepted good film and one globally accepted bad film into one hopefully cohesive new film for you guys. With that said, let's dive in and meet our guests. Okay, so we're going to meet our guest, Todd. Who do we have for this episode? All right, so we've got uh, two lovely gentlemen that I know from my hometown of Dallas, Texas. Oh, wow, we're little coming. personal information We there. came in just for this. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, they flew and in. And right afterwards. Oh, we tricked right. them, but I mean... Uh, they've actually... Thanks uh, for paying for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, We can yeah, expense yeah, that, yeah. right? To yeah, yeah, of course, uh, of course, of course, of course, of course. Cool, good. In one corner, we've got comedian extraordinaire Jake Wertheim. Hello, Jake. Thank you, thank you. And uh, in the other... We've got animator extraordinaire Josh Weisbrod, who Hi. informed me in the car that his name means white bread. That's true. Ooh. White bread. <laughs> now, and, as extraordinaires, both of you, do you guys have any extraordinaire, like, uh, inside scoops? Like, are there secret extraordinaire clubs? I mean, like, I'd like to get into that a little bit. Yeah, but How you do you become an... I have to be it. an extraordinaire? You have to be in it. The group okay. Talk about if it's 10,000 hours to be good at something, what... How many hours am I looking at to be an extraordinaire? I think you just don't keep track, right? Yeah. Just Was that it? I uh, see. Yeah. yeah, they're just Ooh, it's too wow. cool. You know? yeah. I mean, if you spend ten thousand, that's hours, like Morpheus right? level shit. You guys are trying to Morpheus me right now. If you spend ten thousand hours just keeping track of ten thousand hours, then you're probably. <laughs> I'm, gonna, you're gonna I'm really good at, really keeping, really track good at keeping track of time. Hours. I'm yeah. really good at. I'm a timekeeper, yeah. guys. So the moment that's I don't I'm realize I'm good at it, I'm good at it. Yeah. I got it. Uh, someday I'm gonna introduce you as as yeah, Jay Jones, timekeeper extraordinaire. So we also like to play a little game at the beginning of just like a little personal question to get to know you guys uh -oh. um, for blackmail for blackmail for, reasons for Yikes. totally legal purposes the personal question that we're going for this time is what is the first movie you ever made out to Ooh, scarface <laughs> whoa okay yep. i can see that scarface has got some sexy moments i'm trying to think <laughs> it, it does was, though yeah michelle does, pfeiffer right? is oh that's oh, right michelle incredibly pfeiffer. sexy honestly that ever movie. since yeah, like, catwoman oh. in batman well. returns i don't <laughs> think of michelle pfeiffer in any other uh oh, in my I, young in my youth yeah. like in that cat costume forget see about i it. think about scarface when she like she comes down the <laughs> stairs or whatever and it's just like uh, you know yeah. just like Whoa. your tongue rolls out of yeah. your yeah. mouth oh. and your eyes shoot out like a cartoon character yeah absolutely it's oh my god awesome now, did, did you have to was that the first time you saw scarface oh no it was like oh, okay like the fifth so was it your like choice? baby baby her first time. <laughs> oh okay it was her first time it's and called think, scarface uh, it's real romantic you're in the you ruined the movie for her Right. Yeah, you kind of destroyed yeah. that movie going experience. Right? See, that's a long uh, movie. So it's also on a lot of cocaine. Oh, okay, that's good. That's, <laughs> no, no, no. That's a very important note. A good choice because that movie lasts for so long that you can get some, you know, quality makeout time in there. Quality. It's a long movie. It's a pretty long like movie. We stopped. We start again. That's good. We laugh. We cry. You know, all that good stuff. Well, most normal things you do during making out. Exactly. <laughs> can I get a different question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about this? Maybe the first movie you you saw and you were like, you know what? Girls, I'm into it. <laughs> Making out sounds great. Oh, well, what about like Camp Nowhere? Remember there that? There you go. Ooh. There you go. At the end of the movie, like everybody's making Everyone out. Everyone is making out. I was Absolutely. like, I've never seen a movie like that where everybody's just Even making out. Even Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. Yeah. Christopher Lloyd's just making out. Wait, Christopher out. Lloyd's making out at the end? No. Making oh, out with, yeah. yeah was, okay, that would have been terrifying. I can't <laughs> imagine Christopher Lloyd making out with anyone. No, he was making out with like a, a 15 year old girl. Okay, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. That's thought really I knew, what was going thought on. Thought I knew what this movie was. No idea what this movie is now. <laughs> Give me a quick summary of Camp Nowhere. I don't actually. You don't, you don't know this movie? Camp no, 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 no. Camp Nowhere is all these kids are getting sent off to camp. This one kid in particular to make out with Christopher Lloyd. No, no, no. This one kid in particular has like they're like we're gonna send you to this computer camp because you're gonna have to learn computers. And then one kid is like we're sending you to fat camp because you got to learn this and whatever. Oh. And all the kids it's like the black hole they get, of they camps? get kind of like mad and they and they form like this coup where they're. 
basically going to create their own camp. Oh, you know what it is? Yeah, it's, it's the movie Accepted, but about a camp. There you oh, go. Wow, it's, it's that's what it is. It's like they oh we're not gonna, go. we're gonna go to college. No, we're gonna make or it is up. Accepted the movie Camp Nowhere, but oh, with college. That's you know what you're correct. We should give Camp Nowhere. <laughs> we should give <laughs> Camp Nowhere <laughs> a little bit more credit. Yeah, I actually really liked that movie. Yeah, you know, especially that ending. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we learned a little bit more about you, and now that'll be taking us into our game Blockbuster Smash Up. Smash, 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 smash. All right, this is our game, Blockbuster Smash Up. This is where Todd and I will name a globally accepted good film and a globally accepted bad film, and we'll be forced to smash them together to create for a brand new film for all of you in real time. So, Todd, are you ready on the count of three? Yes, I have the bad film. And I have the globally accepted good film. I'm excited. One... Two, three, Star Kangaroo Wars Jack. Episode Four. God damn it! <laughs> wow, Kangaroo Jack. Wow, that's great. You monster. <laughs> I would have never guessed Kangaroo Jack. Wait, wait, Episode Four. Yeah, Star Wars Episode a Four. New, a new hope. A new hope. A new hope. So, oh it, my I mean, Star God. Wars is, Episode Seven is just about to come out. Force Awakens. So I was like, God, man, no, I gotta go. Star great Wars, choice. Man. Mine, however, was not. Uh, was such a great choice. <laughs> I must say, I never saw Kangaroo Jack because it looks so horrible. I actually well, mostly so I didn't see it because I heard the prequels were so bad. I, <laughs> I, never, I never got to see it, but I really wanted to. I, I kind of feel... Well, we got a surprise for you, Josh. Wheel in the television. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> um, yeah, so I had actually never seen it either, but remembered it fondly as that dumbass kangaroo movie. Is and Jerry O'Connell in it? Jerry yeah, O'Connell is <laughs> all over it. He plays the, over well, it. He's like the, uh, the friend of the kangaroo, right? So, no, okay. So, like, I wanted to see this movie, but I never did until about four hours ago Whoa. when I, I watched Whoa, it today. What? I watched Kangaroo Jack today, and it was... Why did you a, make that decision? It was bad. It was a terrible decision. <laughs> no, I thought it would be a good movie. <laughs> Todd, Todd just this pulled out what looks like serial killer notes. This is what uh, uh, Wikipedia describes <laughs> uh, Kangaroo Jack as. 2003 American-Australian buddy action comedy produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. That sounds great. Jerry Bruckheimer produced it? Jerry Bruckheimer produced it. Honestly, I would be in. And you know Bruckheimer films, the the, the opening little tag thing where like it's going down like a road and then it finds a tree you know yeah, that's, like, yeah. well, the lightning strike while they're yeah. doing that there's like kangaroos that are going past oh it no <laughs> <laughs> that was like, oh, honestly the whole movie i just kept going mm, st stop so okay the story is about two idiots charlie and lewis a long time ago charlie's mother marries into the mob she marries like the mob boss whoa years later charlie owns a hair salon and he's a hairdresser because which is uh -huh. classic mob classic franchise mob, fair you know, exactly is yeah this jerry o'connell and jerry o'connell is a hairdresser in the future now listen like, we're know. gonna own all the hairstylists <laughs> in the entire town. We're going to have this cool. thing on lockdown. <laughs> That's right. They bungle a job for this mob boss stepdad. They bungle um, it? They, they, yeah, they bungle it. They do. There's like a job that they're sent on and they bungle it. The, gotcha. the mob boss, by the way, is played by Christopher Walken. Whoa. So there's oh, actually wow. some... Hold there's, on a second. There's some, heavy hitters, in this there's some I mean, heavy hitters in this movie. That's the funny part. And they're sent by Christopher Walken's like right-hand man, played by an early role of Michael Shannon's. Whoa, and really? It's, it's Whoa. actually really good. That's the thing is that there's like heavy hitters. There's sent to Australia to deliver a package to this guy, but what you really find out is that they're actually just being sent to their death. Wait, Christopher Walken is sending Charlie. Yeah, his stepson. And and Michael Shannon. No, no, no. no. And uh, Anthony, Anthony Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah, it's uh, Jerry O'Connell and, and Anthony, Anthony Anderson. Anderson's in this That's movie? like his best friend, and he's always like, gotcha. you know, I saved your life, so we gonna do this. Or so whatever. they're sending Charlie and Anthony Anderson to... To the desert to in die. Australia to die, because, you know, that's what everyone is does. Is there going to be a guy to shoot them there? They're, or they're, they're just going to die They're delivering no money. Oh. What they find out is that it's actually $50,000 worth of money and they are delivering money to the person who's going to receive said money for their own hit. Oh. So they're actually, they're bag men for their own hit. <laughs> That's pretty great. And then on the way, That's they... That's pretty genius. Great for that killer. I mean, like, probably the best job you could ever have, it's right? It's not a bad deal. You get it. Here's you, the you, money to kill me. Right. Here's the gun and shoot, I'm dead. Along wow. the way, of course, things go wrong. Lewis has a lucky jacket. That's part of this movie. I just remembered that this movie has a kangaroo in it. Where, <laughs> Here we where go. Where does yeah. a kangaroo Lewis has a lucky jacket. He puts the money inside the jacket. Charlie and Lewis hit 
a kangaroo on the way to this deal. Oh, and then that's kind of th- dark. They think that the dead kangaroo carcass looks like a friend of theirs, so they dress it up in sunglasses <laughs> and a and a ja- they dress it up in sunglasses <laughs> and his his like lucky jacket because they're like, oh, it looks just like this guy. And so and then the, the kangaroo wakes up and runs off with the jacket, which also has the money in it, thus setting off an entire like Looney Tunes like Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner cat and mouse game across the desert making fun of australian people and phrases good a terrifying kangaroo filled <laughs> fever dream they get theirs camel fart jokes i mean it's got everything camel fart jokes it's got everything i remember the previews uh relied heavily on scenes of the kangaroo rapping rapping so whoa does, oh yeah wait what does this kangaroo in this movie can you confirm <laughs> whether he raps the whole movie and and talks and, and he's really cool i can confirm Confirm that Kangaroo Jack raps in this Whoa. movie. It is, however, during the terrifying Kangaroo Fever Dream. That's very much like the uh, Malkovich scene uh, where he goes inside see. of his own head and it's like everything's a kangaroo and everyone's talking like kangaroo. Ooh. The tagline for the film on the poster says, He stole the money and he's not giving it back. Kangaroo dun, dun, dun. Jack. They didn't, even <laughs> they didn't really think that one through. Yeah. To be fair, Back this kangaroo line. would obviously run away because all it knows from this people is that they, they attempted to murder it. They ran out. Yeah, and then they were making fun of his dead and body. Yeah, and then they like these guys are sociopaths. They yeah. they hit a kangaroo instead of leaving said dead kangaroo or burying it or doing anything. <laughs> right. They were like, it looks like our friend. Which, by the way, which friend is that? <laughs> that looks like a fucking kangaroo. And they were like, ah, oh, we'll dress him up and stick a dead kangaroo carcass in our truck. Uh-huh. All right. Well. My film was Star Wars. What's Ooh, that one? A about? New Hope about Star Wars. Okay, let me give you the quick summary of Star Wars. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, a young farm boy named Luke Skywalker is thrust into a galaxy-spanning war between the oppressive Empire and the freedom-fighting rebels. Armed with a lightsaber that's killed dozens of children, <laughs> Luke and Obi-Wan Kenobi, a friend of his father's, team up with Han Solo, a space pirate, Princess Leia, a space princess, and Chewbacca, a space bear, to battle the Empire and help destroy their ultimate weapon, the Death Star. And do they destroy it? Yes, the end. Also, there's a villain <laughs> called Darth Vader who chokes people with space magic and wears a cape. And uh, some fun facts about this movie, guys. Canonically, the music heard in the cantina scene on Tatooine is a genre of music in the Star Wars universe called jizz. No. Huh. Yes. Jizz. How is it spelled? Jizz. G-I-Z-Z. Yeah. I bet it's some hot music. That, you <laughs> it's, that is... I swear to Hot God, finger licking good music. Right? Like oh, George yeah. Lucas Hot was like, um, <laughs> I think, I think the music they play is probably just called jizz. Oh my God, no, that's the no, yes, no, yes. Every time you hear like, oh man, the cantina music, jizz, all up in your ears. Oh, now thanks for that. Now, fun fact: every Star Wars film includes the phrase, "I have a bad feeling about this." In really? some way, yeah. Almost even oh. the prequels. Every single one includes the phrase. So keep an ear out. Force Awakens. And finally, Harrison Ford was paid ten thousand dollars to play Han Solo in the first Star Wars movie. Holy Just mackerel! Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a, ton of money. Yeah, that's a right? lot. I wish I yeah. had that ten thousand dollars. The it, flip <laughs> side in nineteen seventy dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, the flip side, um, the like, actor who played Obi Wan Kenobi wasn't super psyched about the movie, but ended up getting like back end points on Star Wars and made ninety five million dollars. Alec Guinness wow. made ninety five million. Ninety five million. Well, he deserves it because wow. Alec Guinness is the shit i mean he owns those movies oh he's so great solid obi-wan so the real issue here is that we have to put a kangaroo in fucking star wars <laughs> christopher walken would make a good darth vader oh yeah Boom. Oh, we're, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves I'm, all right i'm seeing the two bots okay. as as our two as as uh, our yeah, jerry o'connell our and our guys. and our uh that's what is it that's what i'm seeing oh, it's jerry o'connell and anthony anderson and anthony Archie anderson because he's short <laughs> oh <laughs> hell yeah so, okay okay so we gotta do we gotta do our cold open here so thinking open. about the opening of star wars right, right we right. have like the ship that gets attacked right, right and we right. see our our villain darth vader maybe it's a yacht i'm i'm picturing so i'm picturing <laughs> the in the future there's a big war right a conflict between two sides we have the empire and then we have the rebels i think the empire is just like a mafia yeah it's just space mafia so yeah. everybody speaks in comical mafia accents right and then our rebels are just australians australians exactly, <laughs> exactly. it's just like all of it's their ragtag all of their technology of, uh, is built around like very crazy stereotypical like australian they have, they tech Boomerangs. Boomerangs. They fight with boomerangs. And, uh, yeah, right. There's just, they ride camels. There's crocodiles. There's camels everywhere. They eat yeah. shrimp on the Barbie. Right. But they still listen to jizz. Now... <laughs> 
<laughs> of course. So I think our opening scene has to be Christopher Walken breaking into a ship of just Australians and having to like search for the princess. And they think he's a robot because Christopher Walken's punctuation is all over the place. <laughs> yes. So they think he's actually a robot. You think he's a friendly? But Paul Hogan is but Paul- Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Excellent. To be fair, this film, as it is made, like the studio only knew like five things about Australia. And that's <laughs> what this entire film is right, just. It's, it's like, just like five things they know about There's it. like kangaroos, yep. shrimp on the barbie. Yep. Sometimes there's aboriginal people. A lot of giant knives and like references to and, crocodiles. And lots of like, you know, just Vegemite. weapons and, and, and Vegemite. Vegemite. A lot of Vegemite. Okay, so our kangaroo hero. What's right. his name? Is his name Jack? Jack Skywalker? Jack, <laughs> Jack or, Skywalker. Or the original name of Luke Skywalker was Luke Starkiller. So maybe Jack Starkiller. Oh, there it is. It's a pretty dope name. Jack yeah. yeah, Starkiller it is. Cool. Actually, I'd watch kangaroo, a movie about Jack a kangaroo Starkiller. called Jack Starkiller. Right. It's kind of like Star Fox. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So Jack Starkiller lives with his aunt and uncle. Aunt and uncle. And he's always dreamed of flying in those giant uh, those giant ships that he sees out there. And he and wants they, to get into that war. But he yeah. can't because his yeah. tail is too big. And or the family business is wrapping, big. so they got to work on that, you know? Right. <laughs> So, so he's a you know, his his uh, parents were um, were famous jizz artists. Yeah, and uh, yes. and so he he wants he has dreams of being you know a jizz composer. He he. Yeah. So one day Obi Wan Kenobi's at who's Obi Wan again? Oh, yeah. Paul Hogan. Paul, Paul Hogan, Hogan is, is Obi Wan. Yeah, and he Hogan. and he hits him with his speeder. He hits him with his speeder. He's like, oh shit! And he puts him in th- in his <laughs> father's jacket. <laughs> yes. So I guess the speeder. He falls off the speeder, and the speeder just skids along the sand and just smashes into Luke's. Er, Jack's, this was your father's Jack's jacket. Aunt and uncle's house, and it just explodes. Oh God! Oh up. no! So we find out that Obi-Wan. Paul killed his entire family. So he <laughs> wakes up. He realizes his family's dead. They blame it on space mafia. What he has to give Obi-Wan him is Obi Wan Dundee. I think Obi-Wan what Obi Wan Dundee. Obi Wan Dundee is <laughs> his, his name. name. <laughs> they call that a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you a lightsaber. I'll show you a lightsaber. <laughs> Let's all do Australian it's, accents. Uh, the rest of this podcast. It's, right? Yeah, it's Crocodile Dundee in space, but it's Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan Dundee. Obi-Wan Dundee. So, okay, is it a lightsaber that he gives him, or is it his father's, like, light boomerang? It's got to be a, a laser boomerang, yeah? I think yeah. it's got to be a, a laser, la- laser boomerang. Probably the most impractical weapon <laughs> ever invented. <laughs> <laughs> Throws it, try to catch it. Well, you have to wear a special glove. So, Obi-Wan uh, Dundee has power no hands, right? Power he has no, you got to wear a power oh, glove. It's, Right, yeah. Nintendo was running their promotions, right. cross promotions at the same time <laughs> in this film, right. and the power glove is big. Yeah, so they've got power gloves to throw their. Go to use power light. glove, mate. He's is gonna it a, lose your arm? Is it a light rang? Is that what we'll call light it? Rang. Light, nice. light rang. Light rang. Yeah, your father killed many children with this light <laughs> rang. What happened to my family? He's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But somebody it was came along and killed everybody. It was Obi Wan Dundee space that mafia. did it. Must oh. be the space mafia. Yeah. Sydney spaceport they go to. Good old Mouse over there in Sydney spaceport. Mouse in Sydney. I can't do an Australian accent. <laughs> so they go to Moe's in Sydney Spaceport and they get their drinks. And, and who do they run to? Who is going to take them to space? Because we need a Han Solo. Well, first off, Chewie is a big uh, koala. He's oh my huge, God. Huge koala. Yeah. Excellent. That is huge amazing. Koala. Excellent and really, choice. And really ripped. Like huge you know who, muscles. A jacked koala. You know yeah. who I think Han Solo is? Who? It's got to be Mel Gibson. Whoa. Is he in Kangaroo Jack? No. <laughs> I think it should just be Chris Hemsworth. When I think of Australia now, I just <laughs> oh, think of Hemsworth. All right, you got it, you got it. Yeah, I mean, if we're doing it yeah. now, I mean, like, we got to we got to yeah. have, like, Obi-Wan Dundee as our throwback, but Chris yeah. Hemsworth is, like... He'd be a good uh, he'd be a good Han Solo. If, yeah. if Paul that Hogan guy. is classic movie Australia, I think Chris Hemsworth is, like, new movie Australia. So it's Chris Hemsworth and a giant... And a giant koala. koala. <laughs> so what's the name of their ship? The Millennium Fosters. <laughs> this is, God. <laughs> <laughs> they call a cup What's of joe over there like a cup of coffee they call it a cuppa if that helps anything <laughs> <laughs> i know it's australian facts That's all i, I know. think it did i think it did the millennium dingo there it is you know what koali <laughs> sometimes i think we're all just stereotypes but you know koali what i love this damn the ship cent- the centennial dingo <laughs> gotta, the centennial dingo i gotta jump in the ring <laughs> okay that's an awesome name that's it centennial, centennial dingo. dingo is definitely the name i'd fly that ship so we got obi-wan dundee mm-hmm. we've got jack star killer <laughs> yes he's still called han solo because they just couldn't think yeah, of anything couldn't better because han solo is the best name and then we've got koali and they are going on an adventure to rescue the space princess and what is her name she's australian carrie fisher kylie Minogue. That's sure. who it is. It's Kylie Minogue. Sure, Kylie Minogue. Why not? Yeah, and why her not? name is just Kylie Minogue because she's a national treasure. Unless you... 
<laughs> princess she Kylie. Yeah. Princess Kylie. They love her. Right. Princess she, Kylie. They were, like, they were like, look, you got to make fun of Australia so much. You got to put Kylie Minogue in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is in like the sort of alternate universe where instead of China owning the United States, it's actually Australia. It's actually Australia. Australia. Yeah. So this is like this in the future, this movie that America is trying to make, like Jerry Bruckheimer is like trying to make this movie with Australian money. And so he has to like put in a lot of Australian shit. Yeah. In it oh, to like yeah. Appease yeah. Australia. You and know? The, oh, the Rebel Alliance all, it's just Australia. It's just <laughs> Australia. So, it's the Aussie Alliance. So actually what this movie is really about is it's a propaganda movie in the world, in this alternate universe. It's actually a propaganda Oh yeah, This is a movie. super important political film. <laughs> I mean, this film is going to change Uh-oh. history. Oh yeah, it already has. So Kylie Minogue and our team are, are rushing to the Death Star to take this thing out. So we get to the Death Star. Mm-hmm. We have to have the showdown between Obi-Wan Dundee. Now we haven't called him. Should it just be Darth Walken? Darth Walken. Darth Walken. Because Darth, Darth Walken is pretty great. It works. So Darth Walken and Obi-Wan Dundee have a fight with the classic old force powers throwing boomerangs at each other. These things are inaccurate because it's tough to catch. So they're just they're just killing stormtroopers left and right. You're killing my army. You're killing my stormtroopers. I think our stormtroopers are all just guys dressed in Armani suits. They're all white <laughs> Armani suits. None uh, of them cool. Can... That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's it's just it. it's just a yeah. fleet of Armani suits. Is it white? Are they white Armani suits? Oh yeah. yeah. But here's the problem because they're all the Armani suits. Ties. Like the Empire is in serious debt. Like they spend way too much. <laughs> money and all these suits which is why they're taking over planets and right that's why the death star is falling apart yeah the death star is falling apart they're oh, like yeah, guys yeah. the budget for the suits we went overboard there are trillions of dollars in debt so this is like it's it's all uh that's there's this there's what's going on in this uh kangaroo jack star wars hybrid and then there's what's really going yeah, on it's really yeah. happening i mean in you thought, america yeah <laughs> the poster said fun with in, a kangaroo and a light boomerang in america australia rang, really it's about politics yep. and it's about making the a statement obi-wan Dundee dies just like Star Wars style Mm -hmm. and what's our final run so there's got to be a rap somewhere I think I think our uh, Jack Starkiller has to realize his real potential in feeling the Vegemite in the universe yeah feeling the force is um, just to play jizz whenever he uh, you know gets (laughs) that's what actually shuts down all the guys in the suits there you go can't handle the music yeah exactly they pipe in the jizz to everyone's uh, like earplugs in like the uh, in the you know I guess they're they're Armani suits yeah Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, absolutely. And we then said Vegemite was the force, but maybe the jizz is the force. Maybe jizz is jizz really is the, the force. force. Yeah, maybe it'd be nice, you know. Maybe there's two sides of the coin. There's, there's like jizz the, and you know Vegemite. they thought Vegemite was the way, but it turns out jizz is the way. The dark side and the light side. Yeah, yeah. Right. Vegemite right. is the dark side. So you know, Vegemite's the dark Christopher side. Walken, Darth Walken, has always just been preaching the Vegemite. When and realize Obi Wan Dundee has been like, it's the jizz. His costume. <laughs> it's always been the jizz, Jack. He's just covered, <laughs> covered in Vegemite. So Australia is going to make the final assault. <laughs> On the space mafia yeah, to right. take them out. So uh-huh. Jack is basically rocking well, rocking the jizz oh, yeah. across all the speakers. Well, uh, you might that, call it Ayers Rock. They have that uh, that military meeting and nobody wants to let him wants to let him do it. They, right? Nobody wants yeah. to let him speak. But then he just starts rapping and then oh, they, yeah. they're all ears. They didn't want to let a kangaroo like go do this mission because they didn't trust him. Exactly. Right See, that's the other thing. This movie also has a lot of comments about racism. Yes. Kangaroo yes. racism. Kangaroo racism. Kangaroo racism. Yeah, yeah. kangaroo racism. Right. Right. Definitely. Yeah, that's kangaroo a thing. God, this film's gonna be so important. So after we have the rap in the military war There's room, just white jizz then, coming down on all the walls. Like, whoa, 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 Josh, 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 Josh. You, you know that jizz Josh. is the type Josh. of music. I mean, come on, you know. Let's be professional here, okay? We're not just saying jizz because jizz is a funny word in real life. Yeah, we're saying we are saying it's jizz a serious form of because music. it's a serious genre of music that's right. really underappreciated in the Star Absolutely. Wars universe. Right. So they're fly. They fly, they get into the ship, and the ship they fly looks like that uh, opera house in Sydney. Oh, oh it's cool. a giant opera house. Giant opera house. Cool, That's a dope nice. Ship. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Darth Walken's coming up fast, and his, uh, what are the, what's the X Wing? What are the, the TIE Fighter? What's the TIE Fighter in this universe? What about a black limousine because the mafia. Yeah, like, I think it's just got to be a flying limousine. I mean, totally. they're all wearing Armani suits, they're totally. all flying totally. just limousines. Yeah. 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 Uh, while, while Space Australia just flies opera houses. The limousine one. The classic space battle opera houses. <laughs> Versus, versus limousines, limousines yeah. Tommy guns shooting out of the sides. Just, oh, yeah. You know, and like R2-D2. Or R2 whatever. Anthony Anderson. R2 Anthony Anderson oh. Oh. Is, is sitting right on top of... Uh, of Jack's uh, whatever Jack's uh, Opera House Jack's, Jack's Opera House yeah, and he's just sitting on top getting shot by the by the <laughs> by the top <laughs> and then Jerry O'Connell as C-3PO yeah starts to cry and tell 
the dead Anthony Anderson, just like the how headless great of a friend Anthony he is. Anderson, yeah. yeah, how much he loves his him. His robot tears just fall on the circuitry and and, and make then he it kisses him. Yeah, right. Yeah, we finally get that moment we were waiting for in all those. Star That's Wars really films. what it was all yes. about. We were it's finally C-3PO. waiting for R two and C three PO. It's a know. bromance between R two D two and C three PO. And then yeah. out of hyperspace comes the Centennial Dingo. You got this kid, and he's looking over <laughs> at dead headless Anthony Anderson. <laughs> And he's looking at like just like the love that these two robots shared, and he's just like, "I think I've got it. I think I've got enough jizz to make this happen." <laughs> yeah. And he he belts out just a, a rap concert that like the guys in their Mar- Mar- right. Armani suits they just they start moving their hands and their feet they just can't and their the controls are all over the place Jack and they're crashing like, into each other. There you go, on that's it. And the you've jizz, got a hang of it now. The jizz is so powerful it's, that it brings Anthony Anderson back to life. Exactly. Oh wow. Yeah. Because Jizz brings life. That's right. <laughs> so one of the controls goes wrong. The Death Star explodes. They all go home. And I think in the final scene, you have to have Jack Starkiller like there talking to Ghost Obi, uh, like Obi uh, Dundee. Yeah. And, and like Obi-Wan the last Dundee. line of the film just has to be, "Oh yeah, by the way, I killed your parents." And, just, <laughs> and, then, it just, and then it just cuts to black. Uh, He's just yeah, like, right, "What?" Yeah. So I think I mean we've got all the casting pretty tight on this film. Uh-huh, oh yeah. I mean Darth Walken. Yeah. I mean uh, bringing Paul Hogan back. Absolutely solid oh, choice. Crims. Chris Hemsworth, the new Han Solo going forward. I can Ooh, see it. I mean, absolutely. of course, until it releases and we realize that we've completely we have springtime for Hitler stereotyped, the entire world. Yeah, yeah stereotype like two huge, you know, cultures. It's going to be great. I hope that the hit, uh, right? <laughs> I hope that the preview has plenty of that koala in it. You know, just it's going to be predominantly koala. But here's the thing: in the third movie, everyone's going to get real pissed off when they go to a planet and it's just tiny koalas. They yeah, were like, right. it should have been the big giant koalas, but it's actually just koalas. It's just real koalas. They did it for the toy Ooh. sale. You know what? The koala is going to fall in love with the kangaroo. Whoa. It's like an interracial movie. Oh, my God. I your, love the species. sequel. I love this that's sequel the se- coming up. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Oh, yeah. yeah no. Whoa. That's number two. So Whoa, what's you're, this? You're, you're throwing fire right now. <laughs> we need to. Hot fire. We, hot you, fire. We need to get this on paper. You're throwing laser rings over there. <laughs> <laughs> They're called light rings, Todd. <laughs> light rings. Uh, so this movie, what's it called? It's uh, oh, God, Kangaroo this... Jack in Star Wars. It's like A new Jack. Jack the Force. <laughs> Jizz Awakening. <laughs> Jack the Force, the Jizz Awakening. Oh my God. Jeez. <laughs> Part four. <laughs> well, I, think, I think Jack the Force has to be uh, like maybe on the poster, but maybe the movie is Kangaroo Wars, the Jizz Awakens. I think this film's probably going to be known for the YouTube supercut of them saying jizz the number of times <laughs> online. Jack the Force, May 2026. So, <laughs> that was our film and our smash up, and that'll take us to our game, the old family favorite. Mary fuck kill. Mary fuck. Mary fuck kill. Mary fuck. Mary fuck kill. Mary fuck. Mary fuck kill. All right, this is our game, Mary fuck kill. This is where we will name three films that are alike, and we will each have to decide which one we would marry, which one we would fuck, and which one we would kill, and we can decide any way we want. That's right. Any However, we want to justify it. You. No one will be judged. Uh, okay, so this week we're going to do seemingly dumb buddy comedies that are actually like genius buddy comedies. Like the duo is like their dumbness saves the day. Like that's kind of right. okay. Kangaroo so we, Jack. So we've got Dumb and Dumber, obviously. <laughs> Dumb, Dumb and, and Dumber, Dumber for and sure. The, and these are all buddy comedies. So Dumb and Dumber, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Ooh. and Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. So guys, does anyone have their picks? Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Jake, know. take it away. I would fuck Romy and Michelle's. Ooh, high school there reunion. it is. Yeah, Why? Too. Why? I got a Mira Sorvina thing. Oh, She's all right. Just, oh. I thought you had a thing for reunions, but I uh, I <laughs> miscalculated. Those miscalculated. Those miscalculated there. Oh, gorgeous Lisa Kudrow. I'd have sex with her. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> like, no, any I like woman a, in that film. No one could see it, but you like Lisa? really thought that through. You're like, eh. he wasn't sure. Yeah, about it. No. yeah. You know what? You he know, wasn't I sure. would, dollars to don't. I mean, when it comes down to it, yeah. Yeah, I would. Anyway, that's that. You'd fuck Romeo and Michelle's I, high school reunion. I would make love to Romeo and oh. Michelle's oh, high school reunion. Oh, how nice of you. Wow, first gentleman on the show. You know, everyone just goes straight to fucking. Right. But yeah, this man's all about no. making that sweet love. You know, nice. I, I'm a romantic at heart. And I would marry Dumb and Dumber. Oh, yeah? Because, like... What, what a fun marriage. Right? It's just, you're going to like it for a long time. It's been, what, 15, 20 years? And you're still enjoying it? Yeah, oh, right. absolutely. And I would kill Bill and Ted. Not because I don't like Bill and Ted. 
Ooh, but tough. because uh, those Matrix sequels are just shitty as can be, and Keanu <laughs> just needs it. Just needs it. If Catch he died then, uh-huh. he would be like a River Phoenix situation. If Keanu Reeves died and he had done only Bill and, Ted. Bill and Ted's and Point Break, everybody would be like, "Oh my god!" Like the the legend that is Keanu Reeves. <laughs> would they said that though? Would based they, on they, just some <laughs> few movies. Yes, because in he's the, so the good Acad- at that. In the Academy of just like a, they would just have all these statues, and then there would just be Keanu Reeves. Maybe, what if he died? during the filmmaking of the matrix so that we got him in the matrix too and everyone's like oh my god like do we get hardball or not what's that hardball I've seen the replacements. He's in that. Oh yeah, I saw yeah. that too. Let's own oh, the Keanu Reeves film. Reeves film. Much Ado About uh, Nothing. Uh, the m- 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 Matrix, I think was one of the ones he was in. <laughs> What's the one with Sandra Bullock where they put letters in the mail but they're years apart? Glass House. I don't know. It's called um, Time Mailbox. Time. <laughs> it's, it's probably. Huh. All right, yeah. I got a pitch called Time <laughs> Mailbox. <laughs> It's a magical mailbox where you put letters in it and it comes out at Who do different you have in it? Who's going to be in it? A little bit later. Keanu and Sandra. <laughs> Just later on. Just later on, you open it and it's uh, the same letter, but from you earlier. Can, you could only send letters into the future. <laughs> forward into the future. <laughs> I'm putting them in the mailbox. So I would marry, fuck, and kill time mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know what their next Mary Fuck Kill will be? I can you say can, mine. You can oh, go? Yeah. yeah. I would say that I would most definitely marry Bill and Ted. I mean, traveling through time, you're going to meet all these crazy presidents and like conquerors. And, I'm like, with you. I would also history. marry Bill and Ted. And also like imagine. the future's great. Yeah. People are rocking out. Yeah. I think I would, I would fuck Dumb and Dumber. I would fuck it for the laughs. There's a lot of good laughs. laughs. I, like a, I like a lot of humor in my, in my late night romps. It's, uh, it's just, so, I mean, just so much fun and so much smiling and yeah, so much, so much uh, shitting, so much shitting, yeah. <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> Dumb and Dumber, a real sexy film. <laughs> so you'd kill Romy and Michelle? I'd kill Romy and Michelle. I am also going to marry Bill and Ted, fuck Whoa. Dumb and Dumber, and kill Romy and Michelle. All right, Why are you killing Romy and Michelle? Hey, bro? there's no listen. Someone's got to go. That's it. Yeah, that's it's as simple true. as yeah, that. It was it's hard. a great buddy movie, but someone's got to go. We are in agreement, sir. Seamsies. Yeah. Down and down. What about you, Josh? Well, I would definitely. Marry Bill and Ted. Boom. You gotta marry Bill and I Ted. I mean, I know what is gonna Only happen. Only a fool. I, I mean, mean, the worst would I guess him. I'm the one fool, I guess, huh? And you <laughs> Monster. Know, Monster you know, over here. You know, they're gonna have that bogus journey, and that one's even better. Yeah. So you would marry Bill and Ted. Who would you make sweet love to? I don't want to assume. Or Fandango. Well, you know, I was going to fuck Dumb and Dumber, but everybody in the room is killing Romy and Michelle. And, you know, it's really only fair Feel that, bad. that I fuck the two of them because <laughs> it's, it only, it's only fair. fair. I never, I never really, time after I never time. had a high school reunion and they're really the only experience I have with it. And also they were my first R-rated movie that I ever saw. Oh. Whoa. Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. So you have so. some real deep seated passion there. We have she, they're real, the one that got away. Some lust. We have a relationship. I mean, you know, if you're lost, you can look and you will find it. Time, time after, after time. Time, time after time. time. So wow. you time. killed Dumb and Dumber? I guess I have to. I mean, <laughs> I just watched it recently, so and you I were like, kill him. "Fuck this!" Movie. So I'm good. No, I'm good I, thought, now. I thought it was great. You know, that's a great movie. Yeah, but, but you gotta idiots. kill. Someone's gotta go. Yeah, you someone's know? gotta, gotta go. go. Exactly. It's like it was gonna happen eventually. Somehow it didn't in the interim between the uh, first movie and the sequel that came out <laughs> recently, but. I guess it has now. Guys, thank you for coming on the show. Yes, thank you both. And very smashing much. these films together yes. with us. Mm, I, Yay. I had fun smashing and fun talking about Jizz. It was a great time. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. <laughs> Who doesn't love that? Thanks for listening. I hope you learned a lot about Australia and space music. And if you're enjoying the show and you've got a second or two, a quick rating or review on iTunes would be amazing. Or you could share the show with a friend. Either way, we really appreciate your support. And as always, we'll be posting a new episode every other week. And if you'd like to download more episodes or check out other similar podcasts, head over to partialarc.com. That's arc with a C. Of course, you can email us any questions at blockbustersmashup at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Partial Arc. If you'd like to hear more from Jake Wertheim, follow him on Twitter at Jake Marin Comedy. And if you want to follow up with Josh Weisbrod, you can do that at joshweisbrod.com. And be sure to follow Todd on Twitter and Instagram at TG11. Thanks for listening, and see you on the next episode of Blockbuster Smash Up. Let's go home. Let's go home.